Good morning. Today I am excited that I have been invited to read Jeremiah chapter 30. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you have allowed us to learn and to understand that whatever you said, you meant. If you didn't say but a few things, and you didn't say but a few things, you just repeated what you said. You expect for us to live up to every word of it because it's easy to do if we deny ourselves and just go on and do whatever you said do. And we can do it and we can do it well because of who you are working through us. Thank you for this word. Help me with this chapter. Thank you for educating me and help me to receive and only say those things that I believe that you have given me to say. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, this is um, day 30. Day 30, I'm excited that I have not, you know, I haven't ordered anything from Amazon. And I, um, it, what else have I not done? I have not been to Chick-fil-A or Starbucks. I, has, I just said for 30 days, I'm not going to do certain things to bring some type of discipline to my walk and my life to be a more healthier person or a more trying anyway That's, anyway all right jeremiah chapter 30 all right we are in um the instructions of god the word that came to jeremiah from the lord saying thus speak the lord of god of israel saying he said i want you to say Thus speak the Lord God of Israel, saying, This is what the Lord of God, this is what God said. Write you all the words that I have spoken unto you in a book. God understands technology. God understands uh, uh, hearsay. He said, Jeremiah, write this in a book. Put it down where anybody can get it so they won't have. And then I'm going to make the book available to you. I'm going to put it in hotels. I'm going to put it where you can get what I said. I don't know any other author that has put his book in every hotel, whether you like it or not. You can find a copy of that book. Every library has that book. They cannot deny that book. You cannot. That's one place, one thing that we cannot do. So God told Jeremiah, I said, write this in a book. For lo, for surely the day come says the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people. All right. Judah had been sent into exile. And God told the people of Judah and Jerusalem, I'm going to bring you back. So is God talking about the current uh, prophecy that Jeremiah prophesied about? Or could it be extended so we're going to look at, yes, he fulfilled this through Ezra and Nehemiah. But it seems as if God has said, I want to take this. This is going to speak volume. In other words, cut the microphone up because I'm going to go beyond just what I'm going to do and bring you back to Jerusalem uh, after the capture by Nebuchadnezzar. I'm going to talk about what I'm going to do. And I think God is saying, I'm going to make it broad, broader. And if I'm wrong, then we'll... I'm definitely, um, I, I can't say wrong, but I think I'm pretty sure about what I studied with other commentators and what I believe God is saying based on what I see in my own life today. He said, for lo, the days come, says the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity, those that were in bondage of my people, Israel and Judah. So this time I'm talking about Israel and Judah. Now, the last time we talked in Jeremiah's prophecy, I know he emphasized a lot about Jerusalem and Judah. Israel, uh, he is the God of Israel, but his focus seemed to have been on Judah. But let's just, just say I'm talking about all my people. Israel and Judah, said the Lord. And I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. I'm going to bring it back. It shall be done. I am king. I am God. Write it in the book. 
Jeremiah. And these, the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel, concerning Judah. For thus says the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Now, who is that trembling? Who is that that does not have peace? Is it the people that captured you? Or is it the people that were captured? Is it Judah herself? So let's keep reading. As you know, as ye now, ask ye now, I'm sorry, ask you now and see whether a man does travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail and all faces are turned into paleness? God is saying, um, Jeremiah, there's going to be a time when men, every last one of them, and this, this time he's talking about men because he says it's going to be like a woman. And even if it's talking about collectively male and female, but whoever God is speaking to, he is saying the pain that's going to be upon this man is going to be every man. And it's going to be just like a woman in having labor pain. And that's some horrible pain. It doesn't last that long, but it appears that these guys are going to be so full of pain that the paleness of their face would be vivid. That means their color is going out. That's how, how bad that pain is going to be. In these days, or this particular time that God is talking about, he said, alas, for that day is great. I'm talking about it. So that none is like it. This is just one time. On that day, he said, there's, a, there's not another day that ever been mentioned in life like this day. Well, that day is great so that none like it. It even the time of Jacob's trouble. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. So I thought about Jacob's trouble. And I know uh, there was a commentator said that's speaking of the um, tribulation time. But what I know about Jacob personally, having read him in the book of Genesis, when he stole from Esau and he ran away because the sentence of death was over his life. And when he finally connected back to Esau about 20 years later, and he still didn't trust Jacob, uh, he still didn't trust Esau. And he pulled away from him. And we've been having nothing but trouble between Jacob and Esau descendants since then. And he said, this thing is going to be as the trouble of Jacob. But he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass. When God said, when I say it shall, that means you can, be, you can believe it. You could put, I ain't going to say bet on it. But you can trust that God is saying, when I say it shall come to pass in that day said the Lord of hosts that I will break his yoke from off your neck and will burst your bonds and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. In other words, I'm going to pull my people. I'm going to bring them back to the land of promise. Anybody come against you, they got to deal with me. All is slinging you around and having you run and because of what I said, these are the old days are over on this day. He said, but it shall come into pass in that day for the Lord of hosts that I will break his yoke from off your neck and will burst your bonds, your chains around your hand, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. Nobody will take advantage of him. But they shall serve the Lord their God when I bring you back. You're going to serve me. I, he's, I, I know it. I'm not doubting. I don't have any doubt about it. Oh, you are going to serve me as God. He's talking to his people, all of them. But they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. I was talking to my granddaughter. I said, what do you think that means? She said, well, raise up means to, you know, to pull somebody out of something. <laughs> And I said, 
you know, even if there's some discretion, you know, people got some different ways of seeing that particular verse. Nobody's out of order. That's one thing I can say. Those that study the word, they just may have a different point of view, but it's still come is 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 still talking about the word of God. It's not outside of the word. But I'm saying it's like my granddaughter said, I'm gonna get Jesus up unto them. I will raise up unto them. Who? David, their king. So when God says Jacob, he's collectively talking about a group of people. He says Israel, he's talking about a group of people. When he says David, it doesn't have to be particularly David, but being God. But we're just going to keep it as David being who Jesus is as. Their king, whom I will raise up unto them. I'm going to get him up out of that ground. He's going to be just what I said. I'm going to do all of that. So God is saying so far, tell the children of Israel, tell all the people that before I split those kingdoms, that I am going to bring you back and you're going to recognize that I'm God. Your heart hit itself. You don't listen. I scattered you, but I'm not done yet. Therefore, fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, says the Lord. Neither be dismayed, don't be shocked, O Israel, for lo, I will save you from afar. Wherever you are, I'm going to bring you to me, and you'll see from the land of their captivity, wherever they took you from, I'm going to bring you back, and Jacob shall return. He said, I'm giving you these shells today. When I say shell and I'm king, oh, it will be done. And shall be in rest. Where's rest? The word of God. And shall be in rest and be quiet. God said, I live a, my, my, my rest is, you can rest. And none shall make afraid. Nobody. When you get in this word, I'm going to bring you back from afar. You're going to have me as God. You're going to chill out and ain't nobody going to bother you. I give you my word. Now, I'm not done yet. That is the drawing card that God has sent. You got my word. I said shale, S-H-A-L-L. Verse 11, for I am with you, says the Lord, to save you. I'm with you to save you. Though I make a full end of all nations, whether I have scattered you, now I'm going to get rid of them. All right. Yet will I not make a full end of you. I'm going to bring all of your enemies to an end. Every last one of them. I don't care how far you were away from me and where you were scattered. I'm going to bring you back to where I said. And then those that made you um, in bondage to them. I'm going to bring an end to that. You can trust this. I am God. I love my people. And a lot of times we stop right there. And we receive that. But God said, I'm not done yet. For I am with you, says the Lord, to save you. Though I make a full end of all nations, whether I have scattered you, yet will I not make a full end of you. You are still going to be talked about. You still going to be number one. I'm not done yet. But I will correct you in measure. It's going to get you. I see how you act. I know you have done so many things that are not lining up with my word. I'm going to correct you. You're going to realize. That's why I said you're going to be all right. My church, all these denominations, those that think they know me, that's, you know, I'm not talking about those that are trying to hide some stuff. He said, but I will correct you in measure and will not leave you altogether unpunished. I am going to punish you. You, he's, This shell, this is going to help. I am going to punish you. I'm not going to do it all at once. 
But watch, listen to this punishment that God is going to do to his people. You were scattered. I brought you back. I'm going to punish you. But thus says the Lord, your bruise that I'm going to put on you is incurable. That means don't try to go to a doctor. Now, when I read this, I thought about when God said, when, that, when, when John asked who was all those people, that great number, he saw that 144,000. He said, but who are them folk right there? Right there. And the elder, elder, elderly elder in heaven told John, said, that, that was people that survived that great tribulation. See, when we refuse to do it the way God said do, and he meant for us to get this word and live by it, but we we, we won't do that. We just, I'm not going to read it. I don't see it that way. It, you know, all the stuff, we just, I don't see it that way. He said, I meant every word of this. Some of you all love me, he said, but you kind of like um, Apollos. That you preaching, but you need Priscilla and Aquila to advise you that you need the fullness of what I said. But you, but but we won't listen. But God said, "I'm gonna correct you, and it gonna hurt." He said, "There is none to plead your cause that you may be bound up. That had and thou have, you will have no healing medicines. What I'm gonna put on you." It's not a doctor on earth that can give you any prescription to tell that thing to get off of you. Now, when I read about those locusts that's going to last for five months, and he said some people going to wish they were dead and going to want to die and said mountain fall on us, but that mountain ain't falling nowhere. Now, why is God doing that? Because he says, number one, I meant what I said. You didn't pay me any attention. I love you. You want to love me, but you just won't get in my word. I'm not going to let you in, but through the door. And Jesus said, I am it. I'm the door. You got to come through me. And even though I didn't talk much, I meant what I said. When I said, go back and learn of my father, I wasn't playing. He said, I said that. You could, he said, that was not an option. And don't say uh, all the things that we say, well, what about this and that? No, he said, I told you, if you continue in my word, you're my disciple indeed. But somebody told you, you ain't need what I told you. He said, you didn't have to pay no attention to Moses' teaching. Jesus said, I ain't say that. I ain't, Jesus said, I didn't say much. So I don't know why you're confused. If I am the gift of the Father, I want you to meet my Father. <laughs> He said, all your lovers have forgotten you. Now, some people say that's your idols you made. I don't know. That thing don't know how to love them and forget. They have a stick. Piece of wood. But those people that in my day would be those religious people. People that you just love and they love your money. All your lovers have forgotten you. They seek you not. They are not trying to find out how you're doing. For I have wounded you with the wound of an enemy. I am going to make you realize, do not play with my word. With the chastisement of a cruel one. He said, when I get through whooping you, you're going to understand. I meant my word. Why? For the multitude of your iniquity. When you read the word, you find out about yourself. And then you, you stand in the mirror of yourself and you see yourself. And God said, make these adjustments. But if you don't get the word, you're just going to be talking. You're going to be saying a lot of stuff. But God said, but I need you to fix this area. And then I'm going to pause and kind of let you get things together and stop making promises of things that you don't even have any intent to do. Or even have time to do because you're so all over the place. But he said, stop making promises. Ecclesiastes said, let your words be few. Don't say a lot because you say too much. 
you can be accountable for all of that. And I know that. I'm looking at this garden I got. I'm looking at the size house I got. I'm looking at the people that I deal with. I just had to fall on my face and say, and, 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 and Lord said, don't be so quick to be purchasing all that stuff because I'm going to hold you accountable. You like to brag on that you got it. Now, how you going to maintain it? You better give some of that stuff away. I know God is saying that. He said, um, but I have found only these multitude of my iniquities because I'm looking at the word. I'm looking at it and reading it. I said, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I just keep seeing things that I know I have done that was not lined up with the word of God, which is sin. And because you're not in the word, you just keep building sin. And God has said, your sin have increased. Verse 14. And that's why I'm going to whoop you. I told you, stop buying all that stuff on Amazon. I'm telling you, you can't eat everything because it tastes good. I'm telling you about all this stuff. Oh, Lord, I'm just, oh, Jesus, help me. He said, just be able to handle what you can manage. Don't try to get so many members of a church that you can't see after all them folks. Because I'm going to require it. There, in other words, in other words, another word is don't have 66 books and only read a few scriptures out of them. Be found trying to open this book and read it. Therefore, all they that devour you shall be devoured. Anybody that's eating you up shall be eaten up. And all your adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. Everybody that came against you because of me, I'm a, I'm a, they, they got to be bound. And they that spoil you shall be a spoil. Anybody that do anything you not line up with my word, it shall be done unto them. If you are in my word, I ain't promise you that because you just talk. I promise you that because you're in my book. And all that prey upon you will I give for a prey. Anybody come against you because you're mine? I'm going to whoop you now. Oh, Lord, I don't want that whoop. Oh, I don't want to go through that great tribulation. Oh, Lord. He said, because this thing going to hurt. He said, men going to be crying like they in labor. He said, every last one of them. For I will restore health unto you. He said, you're going to get your health back. And I will heal you of your wounds that I put on you, says the Lord, because they call you an outcast. They looked at you and said, ooh. And God said, no, nah, he ain't going to stay like that. I'm going to heal you. I got an appointed time. I think Revelation, if this is talking about that great tribulation when them, when them locusts come and start biting, he said, ain't going to be no cure for that. You go to the doctor, he's bit too. Verse 18. Thus says the Lord, behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tent tents and have mercy on his dwelling places. Everything that Jacob had, I'm going to restore it. And have mercy on his dwelling places. And the city shall be built upon her own heap. He said, all of the stuff that had been destroyed, you're going to build back on top of it. And the palace shall remain after the manner thereof. Everything will be put back the way it was designed. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving. You're going to praise me. Ooh, when you go through that great tribulation, you're going to praise me. Ooh, oh, Lord, have mercy. That's why Jesus said, pray that you are delivered from evil. He said, but when you come through that, you will know that you shall praise me. And the voice of them that make merry, you're going to come out with thanksgiving, the voice of them that make merry, those that just, how can I help you? Those people. And I will multiply them and they shall not be few. That's going to be that great number. I will also glorify them. I'm going to make you known 
You're going to be my people and I'm going to be your God. And they shall not be small. He said, when I whoop that church back in order, you're going to realize I'm God. And don't, he said, you can avoid this whooping. He said, but my people going to get a whooping because I told you getting this word. And you think that what I said, I meant a little of it. He said, I meant every bit of this. I'm going to tear you up. It's like my mama, boy. When my mama whooped you, you thought about what she did. And the word of God said, I'm going to get that church in order. I'm going to break up all these denominations. I'm going to get those Jews that did not recognize who my son is. He said, when I get through with you, you're going to be married. And you're going to realize I am God. He said, your children also shall be as a four time. And I have your son, 39 years old. He's going to act like he got sense enough when he was a child to obey. <laughs> And their congregation shall be established before me. In other words, when you come together, you're going to check my word. Now, nah, that don't please the Lord. Ah! That sounds so delicious, so good. And I will punish all that oppress you. Anybody get in the way. I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to take care of my people, but my people going to recognize I'm God. Do you know I'm God? I meant for you to read that word. He said, and their nobles shall be of themselves. In other words, your behavior is going to be so distinguished that it's going to be inside you of you because of the shaping I got to do in you. You ain't right. You ain't got to be mad at nobody. It's going, when I get through with the church, my people, Israel, he said, it's going to be so much crying. It's going to, you're going to cry. Number one, you're going to cry because you're going to hate that you didn't obey me. You're going to be just like, you know how Judas was when he deceived, when he was um, deceived, rather, or when he chose to be deceived, or when he realized what he had done. He said, I can't live with myself. He said, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to whoop the church. He said, you better believe that. I'm going to tell you. He said, I'm so sick of all that repenting. As a Gentile, and the Jews that said Jesus was not who he was. Because you had already framed your thoughts against my word. You, if you had stayed in my word, you would have recognized that was Jesus. But because you could have your own idea. And you waited on something that had already been. He said, I'm going to you for that. My son ain't going to go through that for nothing. It ain't no way in the world I'm going to let him hang on that tree and let y'all beat him like that and I'm going to get you for what you did. He said, I'm going to get you, but I'm only going to bring do that so that I can get you back in line to understand I'm God and don't play with me. Don't have to do your job. Do something. If you can't do nothing but a little a day, do something to make that get make that part be the whole. Straighten things out and then do it right. Know what things are. Get rid of things that, and I'm just talking about myself. Get rid of things that you don't need that you just looking at because you got a lot of them. He said, they're nobles, those distinguished personalities, that good work shall be of themselves. That's coming out of you because when I get through with you, you're going to bring forth fruit. Your children, your children are going to behave themselves like they did when they were little. Did what you said, dude. Now you're talking back. He's going to get you. Woo! Stay in the word. And their governor shall proceed from the midst of them. Jesus is coming out of the midst of you, Judah, Israel. And I have shut down the kings. And he's still coming. And he came. And their nobles shall be of themselves, and their governors shall proceed from the midst of them. And I will cause him to draw near. I'm a Jesus. Like, I'm the judge, and Jesus, he said, may I approach the bitch? <laughs> and the father said, yes, you may. And that's why it can't nobody hear. Because he reserved the right to say, I'm just talking to my son. 
And when he get ready to reveal to you the things I say, it'll be on time. Yes, you may approach the bench. I will cause him to draw near and he shall approach unto me. For who is this that in, wait, wait, I missed something. And I will cause him to draw near and he shall approach unto me. I, I'm still missing something. Let's start over. And their noble shall be of themselves. And you ain't got to go seek nobody. It's going to be inside of you. The distinguished personality the, the, that exudes out of you. The world is going to be so attractive to you because of who I am through you. And their governor shall proceed out of the midst of them. Jesus is coming out of the midst of you. And I, like Moses said, and I will cause him to draw near. He going to want to be close to me. And I will cause him to draw near and he shall approach unto me. He is, he can't come up to my bench. For who is this that engaged? Who is this that decided I want to be a part of you? Who is who this I'm going to give up my life to be engaged to you? I'm, 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 I'm letting go of my agenda and I want to become one with you. Who is that shall be engaged uh, for who is this that engaged his heart to approach unto me? Who is that want to be that close to me? Says the Lord. And I know I'd have missed some verse up here because it was something about time. I don't see that. Or was I reading in the wrong verse, wrong chapter? Anyway. And you shall be my people and I will be your God. Right, you're going through some stuff now. You're not going to get to heaven. I'm going to have a whole. He said, I got mansions up here. And they are going to be occupied. I am going to have some Ethiopians there. And some Egyptians. I'm going to have me some folk there. Psalm 68. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goes forth with fury. I'm setting you up to know that I'm going to get my people, but then those that would not come. I'm going to send a whirlwind. It's going to be you talk. When I said a whirlwind, I ain't didn't find it to be a tornado, but if that's all you think, and if you think that's something, you wait till I send a whirlwind. Uh, the Lord goes forth with fury, a continuing whirlwind. It shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. Now, what is a wicked person? A person who has my instruction, but play with it. They use my name to draw people and, and you ain't kill them about you wicked. The fierce anger of the Lord shall not return. He said, my, my, when my anger goes out of me, if I give you a cup of my wrath, my cup is not coming back until that cup is empty. The fierce anger of the Lord shall not return until he have done. He said, I got a deadline. And until he have performed the intents of his heart. In the latter days, you shall consider it. And Jeremiah continues to write. I know that that's chapter 30. That's what God said right now. What, have I, what, have I, what am I taking away from this? Is that God is going to bring Israel back. God is going to organize things as they should be. But God is saying to the church and to Israel, to the Gentiles too, because once we became adopted into this family, when that well, how did they say? We wouldn't have got a chance except the Jews dropped it. And then we were engrafted in. He said, but you're showing out just like them Jews. Number one, I asked you to get in my word. I asked you to do it and do it right. Not with emotions. He said, but you, you called on me and you did the right thing. I am. Jesus is the son of God. He said, but I'm going to hope you good. And if you say, when this whooping come on you, you should have known I was going to do it. I'm telling you a full time, a long time before, I'm going to whoop you now. 
But when I get through with you, he said, when them locals come out of there, from wherever I tell them, however it is, I'm going to go back. I don't know whether it's there, but that, that one on my red, I was like, oh. He said, when them locals start biting, they going to bite you for five months. They gonna, they, if they start in January, they'll be done by May. He said, but you're going to hate the day that you neglected what I said because you thought you had enough. And you kept on going back into sin. He said, I told y'all, y'all ain't going to stay in sin. He said, it's, he said, I said clearly that it's impossible to please me if you don't get in my word. But you said faith. Well, define faith. My word. What are you trusting? That's the faith. This is the, I'm reading the faith. I'm reading what to believe. But that's all right. And he said, those that say you are outcast and the Lord is not with you and all of that. He's a child, please. As long as you're in this book, you cover. As long as you're doing what Jesus said. Again, Jesus said, I didn't talk much. But if I said, if I said to you, go back and learn of me. Because this book is written of me. You took it lightly. I did. Like the kids, you said, you're going to get a whooping. You're going to get a whooping. But God is not saying that for me to be sarcastic. He's saying that because I'm, he don't want to have to do it. But he said, well, I'm, I shall do it. And then after you get this whooping, you're going to love me. Because you're going to recognize I don't play. And I am God. That's Jeremiah 30. I don't want to be in a whooping. I, I just, Lord, I help me stay in the word. Ooh. Bye, y'all.